it's a ticking time bomb. The Pacific Northwest coast is due for a monster quake. Thousands will die. Buildings will crumble. It has a one in 10 chance of collapsing due to an earthquake. Accurately predicting the impact of megaquakes on modern structures has been impossible until now. In Chile, it's just happened. For two terrifying minutes, the earth shakes violently. Little fracture on those guys right there. Modern buildings collapse. It finds the absolute weakest point and it comes down. Investigators want to know why. The earthquake in Chile is essentially what we're expecting here in the Pacific Northwest. There's so many similarities that, it, it, frankly, it's scary. And the disaster in Chile, with its strict earthquake codes for buildings. I think if we're going to put up a 50-story building, you'd better stay there. Calls into question the very safety of some of North America's biggest cities. Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver. Many move here for the scenery, but those towering mountains hint at something ominous, something unavoidable, something so big it could level entire cities and kill tens of thousands in minutes. We're talking about bridges going out. Three pillars down. We're talking about tsunamis. Now we got one casualty right here. We're looking at damage all the way from Vancouver, British Columbia down to Northern California. These are giant earthquakes lasting several minutes. It will be devastating. Known as a mega quake, it is one of the most destructive seismic events on Earth more than 100 times more powerful than the great San Francisco earthquake. It is definitely a matter of when, not if. The latest research is showing that they occur about every 300 to 350 years, and the last one was about 310 years ago. Just off the coast of North America, an enormous fault zone runs for more than 600 miles. This is where the Cascadia megaquake will come from. The shaking will last four minutes. In Chile, which is situated in a mega quake zone similar to the Pacific Northwest, the waiting is over. On February 27th, 2010, for two minutes in the middle of the night, the earth shook, sending shock waves from a 300 mile long rupture. Within minutes, a tsunami had crashed ashore. Inland, buildings swayed and toppled. Bridges collapsed. Hundreds died. Seismologists pegged the earthquake at an 8.8, .8, a megaquake. But more importantly, engineers immediately recognized this as the first of its kind. In this one, magnitude 8.8 .8 is probably the most important earthquake in uh, earthquake engineering history. Within days, seismologists and engineers descend on Chile to scrutinize the collapse of new buildings. In Chile, they use essentially the same building code that we do. That's not safe, so that's why we have to get out very fast. And again, if you feel the ground move, we're running. Perry Atabar will cover hundreds of miles, looking to see what went right and what went wrong. We studied that damage very carefully, and we asked ourselves, could buildings in this area, in Vancouver and the surrounding area, have the same problems? The vast majority of buildings in Chile did well, even in the areas closest to the quake. But for some reason, the buildings with the worst damage also seem to be structures built under the latest seismic codes. Many of the buildings that were severely damaged were brand new. I haven't figured out why that is. It's an important question that needs to be answered. The search for answers will require painstaking work. 
hundreds of buildings must be inspected. If there's a flaw in structures that failed here, there's a very good chance the same flaws exist in modern buildings around the world. It's somebody's fault. We have to look at how did it fall and uh, what are the clues, how the steel is bent, how the concrete broke. Well, you see some windows broken, but it's maybe because the building is, is very flexible, again, irregularities in the building. In the city of Talca, many of the adobe homes have collapsed. But there's also been damage to some of the newest structures. This courthouse just opened a few years ago. Inside and out, it has been seriously damaged. Yeah, clearly, you see the, the amount of reinforcement of that is not enough, right? This Engineers, like Carlos Ventura, have argued for years about the use of glass in earthquake-prone areas. The danger seems obvious. Well, you have all this debris falling down, so that, that can kill somebody, so that's, that's not good. Much of the damage at this building was caused by a massive beam that has somehow broken loose from its concrete anchors. The beam is not structural. It's here for looks only. It's a concern because it's a modern design with yeah. modern building codes. 125 miles south of Talca, Chile's second largest city has suffered some of the worst damage. Concepcion is a modern booming place, home to just over a million people. Yeah, look at, look at this stuff over here. They lost a complete story in there, it looks like, huh? Which, uh, down I'm, I'm down. looking at the mid-height. They lost a complete story in there because you got, yeah. I bet you one whole row of windows has collapsed in there. Right. This is the first mega quake to hit a modern country in decades. I mean, I'll bet you go buy some of these other mid-rise stuff and you're going to see damage in some of these things too. It's also the first time this generation of engineers has ever seen the damage that the most dangerous quakes on Earth can produce. Man, this is scary. It's really interesting that it's happening you know, at, at, at mid-height and up the top of the building. That's a different response than what you'd expect to see in this type of building. This brand new office tower was still advertising for new tenants when the quake struck. Today, it teeters near collapse. An entire upper floor has somehow disappeared when the top third of the structure pancaked. The thing's all twisted at the top. Yeah. The O'Higgins building was supposed to be Concepcion's premier office tower one of the most modern in all of Chile. The building has multiple levels. In a sense, it's actually several towers pushed together to form one structure. The building, I, I would say it's lucky. You know, we didn't have a complete collapse, it's lucky. If the earthquake keeps going, we will see more collapse at the upper levels. Once, once the, these upper levels pack it together, and all the other levels won't be able to hold it, the whole thing will come, come straight down. In the engineering community, it's known as an irregular building. On one side, a solid wall with few windows, but on the front, it's nearly all glass. When a building has an irregular shape, then it becomes more complex, and in fact, the damage can be more severe. It can be concentrated on one side rather than being spread around the building. In earthquakes, Buildings sway back and forth. A square building will distribute the stresses evenly. But the O'Higgins Tower was different. Because it wasn't square, and because one side is stiffer than the other, it would have twisted in the quake. The speculation is those stresses would have built up unevenly, eventually causing a weak section to give way. And the result is that under the earthquake, that building will tend to rotate or twist and that'll cause larger damage. Earthquakes find the weak spot in buildings, they always do, you know, and, and irregularities is one area that earthquakes always, always find. Eight-story steel brace frame. When designing a building, engineers try to computer model how a structure will move in an earthquake. The theoretical calculations are based on past quakes and on tests done on massive shake tables that simulate ground shaking but it's far from an exact science. Our computer models are still 
very primitive. There's many types of damage that occur in buildings that at this point we can't model very well. Most engineers would prefer to build square, unremarkable towers. It's no surprise that this building did well. Yeah. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of wall in it. You know, it's pretty well, pretty good regular layout, so they are safe and predictable. But today's big expensive office towers are designed to be eye-catching. After architects dream up the designs, it's left to the engineers to make those ideas structurally safe. Engineers are being pushed by architects and owners to do more every time, to push the envelope, to do a building that's taller, to do a building that's more irregular. An examination of other nearby towers shows the O'Higgins building isn't the only one with structural problems. If you stand on your toes, you can see on the other side, it was starting to go over that window over there too. Yeah. You know, that, that other boundary zone on the other side was starting to go. The earthquake that will eventually hit North America's west coast is expected to be nearly twice the size of Chile's disaster. Shaking will likely go on for twice as long. Much of this country got off easy, but the cracked concrete and exposed steel is a worrying trend. And in one case, it proved fatal for a brand new apartment building. Oh man. 